This is called, uh, some people have heard this before, this is called My Da's Taste. <laughs> it's for my son who sat over there. This is my son. Woo! They're looking at you. I know. I, I used to look better than him when I was my, his, my, his, what? Old Joe was 33 years of age as he sat that day at the blood tub bar contemplating the sawdust of a life spent avoiding his ma, his sister, a wife and two newly disappointing kids. Why couldn't they be as comforting or as entertaining or as thought provoking and as constant as this pint of Guinness? Where's my pint of Guinness? <laughs> Don't usually drink Guinness in New York because it tastes like shh. Sorry, Carl, it's not your fault. Anyway, as this by Guinness, he wondered as the afternoon's sun's rays cut through the fog of the day and made jokes with the ghosts of all the smokes. A tune danced then in old Joe's head, for whatever reason, has memory, and he hummed to himself as he drummed on the wooden bar top. I get no kick from champagne. And old Dave, who was tending that day, made some snarky comment on how he couldn't afford it anyway, and Matilda, halfway down on her stool, and her look, laughed to see the little dogs stick it to each other, but her dish was away with her spoon. And Joe's memory puckered, and he said, Champagne for my real friends, and half-heartedly, the half-assed assembly responded, real pain for my sham friends. And then the radio stuttered, and over the waves from miles away, Frank began to swing. And what are the odds on that? I get a kick out of you, was a song that came through at the bar. Amongst the patrons scattered about, there was much sucking of air through teeth that should have been there. <laughs> there was much sign of the crossing by those that used to believe should use your right hand. Shit, that's a verse, said old Dave. Not wanting to be cursed, but cursing all the same. Make a wish, Joey said. It's got to come true. You're blessed, man. You are blessed. Do the lottery, son. Back at 20 to 1. Do something. Your time has come. So... Old Joe said, okay, I will then, I'll make a wish. And he stood up on the bar, there was silence as he did so. He lifted his pint. <laughs> All brave and fearless like a poltroon in laceless shoes. May my mother, my wife, my sister, my kids, feck my life be a provocative joy and as constant the crowd then whooped in unison at some truth that was probably on the screen behind him. And missed the part where Joe said, As this pint of Guinness. <laughs> so much more was drunk. And the moment was lost within four small walls and many lives and some of the liquid that swamped it. And Joe went home to sour notes in his head and up the stairs was bitterness in a night dress. I'm finished. I am finished. I'm just putting my pen on. When he awoke to his 30th hangover that May, <laughs> I thought she was throwing up right there. Jesus, it's not that bad. When he awoke to his 30th hangover that May, old Joe was alone in his shirt. Where was the bedlam? The mayhem. Where's the fucking poem? <laughs> Where was the mayhem, the bedlam, the questions, the little thorax hanging off his clothes, 
he ventured to breakfast, and all was quiet within his kitchen. There were only smiles forthcoming from the Sprogs, and Joe's wife was Mrs. Polite. Joe drank some coffee. It tasted like stout. Well, that was some way normal at least, but then so did the porridge, and his toast, and the orange juice. And funny, he thought, funny. It all tasted like Guinness. He kissed his kids, they tasted like Guinness. The boy made a face, he kissed his wife, she tasted like Guinness. But she smiled at least, and at most grimaced. And Joe thought on his look, and the bed of his wishes he'd made, and decided, if it tastes like this, I can lie in it. <laughs>